guys welcome to today's lesson in today's lesson we are going to be talking about the wind load so there is a very easy method of doing the wind load with start pro you can come here come to definitions this is the automatic method wind definitions and click add so just click whichever code you want now in this case we don't have the euro code but let's say for example we are using the american code afc you click add then click close because we have only one type of load you want to create you can also create for two types of load be as many as you want then you click add again then now you can put your intensity that's your pressure and put the height you can decide to do it to so average the what we do in the industry is just use the value of one kilometer per meter square and put the height maybe the height is 31 meters so you start to be able to do it or you can tell it to generate automatically and put in your values it will do all this but what i want to do is not really about definition so let's say for example i'm here i've done this i've added it and it's a factor of 0 0.85 sorry 0 0.85 and this is my factor add then close to this 0 0.85 i'll just assign it to all the nodes apart from the ones in the foundation to assign to see not to assign to selected nodes assign to selected nodes and it assigns okay so we are done with that then you can come to your wind load okay so let me go back to the old structure let's go to wind x direction and we go to wind you can see wind in this point is open now if you don't define it it will be open so let's use for the x external and let's use a factor of 0 0.8 okay so it will range it itself at close so you can still eat in the x direction this is what is going to do in the x direction okay then also for the z direction add let's go there z direction z external i want to use the value of for it it's five and add close okay. this is it in the z direction so this is one method of doing this now another method of doing it is let me explain what we have here so you can see this plant so let's assume the wind is coming from this direction okay Let's assume the wind is coming from this direction. So what it means is, as the wind hits this external face, it's going to distribute it. So let's look at this section. Okay. So if you look at it, what we have is, this is the south, right? So once the wind hits this face, it's going to distribute it to node by node through the diaphragm. So our floor is the diaphragm, it's going to transfer it through the floor so you can see in this place let me create a small circle okay somewhere around here and around here let's use for example now so let's say on this area now we have our area is let me get the diameter okay this is six six by three so six meters like this three meters like this so in that case we have an area of 18 meters square and we know that our pressure is one kilonewton per meter square. So that means from this one kilonewton per meter square, it is going to distribute the value directly to each node with respect to the height and with each node. Now, when the node comes to this place, it is the bracing. You can see it as the wind is coming here. It is the bracing in these two directions that will take care of the wind the bracing in these two directions also if the wind is coming from this direction okay, okay. so if the wind is coming from this direction it is the bracing and this other bracing in this direction that is parallel to the direction of the wind that will help in its lateral stability so you get what we are going to do so like i've said we are going to use a value for the south face since south and north is the same thing, you can just use one face for it. So we can use the value of what kilonewton per meter square. Then we need to get the surface area of this building. So to get the surface area of this building, 
I just need to do is take a measurement. Okay, so let's take a measurement, and we have 16 meters. Okay, so 16 meters by this height is 31 meters. 16 meters by 31 meters, so which is going to give us 16 by 31. So which is 496 meters square. So our one kilonewton per meter is going to act on this surface, which means our one kilonewton per meter square times this will give us a value of 496 kilonewton. Right? That will give us a value of 496 kilonewton. So what we need to do now is we are going to distribute this 496 kilonewton to each node. So to each node, one, two, three, we have to de derive it, distribute it. So what we'll do now is we'll go back here and we get our height. So our force is 496. Now this height is this top height. So let me just pick a section. Since it's coming like this, let me show you. What it will look like okay so select your beam cursor let me use this front view okay new view okay so take it from the front now we have a load coming a total load coming on the surface of this is 496 kilonewton so i want to do the node the value of this coming on this node I want to make it coming on this node. So I have or coming on this floor, the total load coming on this floor because the slab will help us, it's going to be a diaphragm, will help us distribute it horizontally. So I have the value of 496 kilonewton times the height, which is 3 meters for that particular floor, divided by 31 meters. Okay, so you can see what we have now. Whatever you get, you divide it by 2. Because looking at it, half of the load will come here, half of this load will come here. So let's go there, divided by two. So let's put it in our calculator. So we have 496 times 1.5 divided by 31. So we have a value of 24 kilonewtons. So that means the total load going to that particular floor is 20. Kilonewton, but remember we have two bracings, so that's the wind coming in this direction. We have a brace here and a brace here, so we divide that wood by two, which is going to give us 12 kilonewton. 12 kilonewton. So I will delete this, I'll be using this one, so I'll just delete it again, delete this, and delete it. So this is just the first way of doing wind load. Generally, when we are doing our wind load, we always use a value of. One kilometer per meter square. But if you want to go deep into it, you can check your code one part four. You explain more about wind. So this is just worst case scenario, the worst thing that will happen. Okay. So let's go to another load. So in the z direction, we have a load of minus twelve kilometers. Add use cursor. Sorry, this is supposed to be in the third direction. Z, so I'll come here, add, and change it. Load that load. Okay, so minus 12 kilometers. Add, please. So use cursor. Use cursor to assign it here. Use cursor to assign it here. So looking at, you can see what it is now. We have 12 kilometers. Now we need to get the load on this. So the way to get the load on that is you change it now. This is not going to be three divided by two. It is going to be half of this here, half of this. So 1.5, 1.5 is three. So we have a value of three. So we'll go back here and press our calculator. 496 times three divided by 31. So 
we have a value of 48 kilonewton and i said we have two bracings at that point we have uh, a brace in this direction a brace in this direction so yeah divided by two so it's going to give us 24 kilonewton so we have another load of 24 kilonewton okay so come here add another load okay minus 24 kilonewton sorry minus 24 add load we we'll use cursor to assign i will assign it here and assign it at this point so we can see it right now since the remaining ones are close to it apart from this last one then i'll just be assigning it to it okay so i've assigned my wind load in that direction okay so we are done with it now next thing we need to do is to do the same thing we have in the x direction okay so what is our surface area of our x direction that is the wind coming in this direction so the total area coming in the that is east the east is which is 22 meters square by 31 so we have an area sorry so we have an area of 22 by 31 which will give us putting it on our calculation on our calculator we have 22 by 31 so we have 600 682 kilonewtons meter square so we you multiply times one kilonewton per meter square if you multiply it you are left with 682 kilonewton so using the same method we did we just apply the load there so we have 600 and 82 times 1.5 divided by 31 so we have a value of 33 kilonewton so using 33 kilonewton like i said we have two braces in this direction one here one here so 33 divided by 2 that's the value of 16.5 so we'll put the value of 16.5 in the other direction we change it to fx which is zero and make it positive so let's say it's going in this direction positive of the direction which is going to be 16.5 okay so add close so let's display the structure go to the plan view and let's highlight this so select this check this create a new view okay so let's view it so this point is going to be 16.5 so use cursor to assign so assign it and assign it here so in case if you don't see it you can see it now so like we said the other method is going to be three so which is going to be 682 682 times 3 meters divided by 31 okay now that is going to be 66 divided by 2 which is going to be 33 so we'll get a value of 33 at that point okay so come here add okay no download and 33 okay. add So apart from the last one which the height is different we won't tamper with that so we'll quickly go back there to do the analysis okay. so to get this last one in this direction what you need to do is 
bring back there which is 682 now the height of this one is experiencing the whole 4 meters plus 1.5 is 682 times 4 meters plus 1.5 and it's going to be divided by 31 so we have a load of 121 121 divided by 2 so 60.5 so we create a new load and put 60.5 at Without load effect 60.5. We add those to so use cursor to assign use cursor to assign. So you can do the same thing for the other direction, which is WZ. Okay. So thank you for watching today's video. If you have any question, you can drop it in the comment section.